This lesson deals with supplemental problem 8.2. You can find this problem in the ECE 202 ebook in the chapter 8 supplemental problem starting on page 2. Given this node where I've got I1, I2, and I3 entering, could you solve for I4 in the form of I sub A times the cosine of 3t plus V if I1 was 6 cosine of 3t, I2 is 4 cosine of 3t minus 30, and I3 is minus 4 square root of 3 times the cosine of 3t plus 60 degrees. So I4 is then equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3, because those are entering the node, and I4 is leaving. So we have I1, I2, and I3. I want to be able to add these together, so let me take and rewrite this expression here uh, using a trig identity, where I have the cosine of alpha minus beta is cosine alpha cosine beta plus sine alpha sine beta, and then with a plus sign here, there's a minus sign here. Then our first term then is 6 cosine of 3t. I've got 4 times cosine of 3t. I've got the minus here, so it's going to be cosine of 3t and then cosine of 30, and then a plus sine of 3t times the sine of 30. Then minus 4 squared of 3 times the cosine now of with a plus sign here. So the cosine of 3t times the cosine of beta, which is 60, and then minus the sine of 3t times the sine of 60. Let's evaluate this. I got the cosine of 3t, and then the cosine of 30 is actually the square root of 3 over 2. Multiply that by 4, you get 3.464 times the cosine of 3t, and the sine of 3t times the sine of 30, but the sine of 30 is a half, so times the 4 is a 2. And then I've got minus 4 square root of 3. The cosine of 60 is 1 half, and that multiplied by 4 square root of 3 is minus 3.464. And lastly, we got the sine of 60, which is the square root of 3 over 2, times the sine of 3t times this, gives me the square root of 3 squared, so I get 3, and I'm dividing by 2, and that's going to cancel one of the 2's here with the 4, and I'm with 2 times 3 or 6. Combine now terms, I got the cosine of 3t times 6, but then I have two terms that are the opposite sign, so they'll cancel. And it's left then with the sine two terms here, which is 6 and a 2, or 8. I want to express this as a single cosine function, so I need to set this equal to some magnitude with some angle that would make this expression work out. So I really have two unknowns here. I have x and I have phi. All right, we can evaluate the equation at two points and then solve for x and phi. Probably the easiest is just to use t equals 0. So I have the cosine of 0 times 6, the sine of 0 times 8, and then x times cosine of 0 plus phi. Now the sine of 0 is 0, so I've got 6 times the cosine of 0, which is 1, and let's have the cosine of phi here times x. Try another easy point. Let's let 3t equal minus phi. Then I get 6 times the cosine of minus phi, a times the sine of minus phi, and then I've got the cosine of 0 here, which is going to be equal to 1. So let's have x. The cosine of minus phi is just the cosine of phi, because the cosine is an even function, and the sine of minus phi is minus the sine of phi, because it's an odd function. I know what x is from this last expression. It's going to be 6 divided by the cosine of phi, so then I can multiply this across here. So I've got 6 cosine of phi squared minus 8 times the sine of phi cosine of phi equal to 6. I can bring the, min the 6 on this side of the equation as minus 6 and pull it out. I've got this term here equal to 0. But cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So cosine squared minus 1 is minus the sine squared, in this case of phi. Bring the 6 over here and the minus sign. And I'm going to divide through by this, which is sine phi cosine of phi. I get one of the sines canceling with this, and I get sine over cosine, which is the tangent of minus 8 6. So I'll take the arc tangent of that, and I get a minus 53.13 degrees. And I can go back and find the value of x from this expression. So x is going to be equal to 6 divided by the cosine of phi, and that turns out to be equal to 10. So my value for I4 then is 10, my value of x, and my angle here of phi. But my final result then is 10 times the cosine of 3t minus 53.13 degrees. Now, in doing this problem, it took me almost a full page to add three cosine functions together, which had different amplitudes and different angles. This is a difficulty with working in the time domain. This is why we're doing phasor analysis. We have a technique that lets us map the time domain into the frequency domain, where the manipulations become much simpler. And we just map back into the time domain. And so we won't use this kind of a technique again in this chapter, or really the rest of the course. And this is supplemental problem 8.2.